video and teleconferencing is approved through a limited time exception reinstituted by the Ohio General Assembly, uh, which directly affects how local governments throughout the state operate in conducting public business. This temporary exception will expire July 1st, 2022. The meeting is now called to order. A roll call for attendance. Mr. Weedman. Present. Ms. Spears. Present. Mr. O'Donnell. Present. And the chair is present. We have a quorum for the meeting. Agenda item number three is the public hearing for the CMHA annual plan for fiscal year 2022 through 2023. During the comment period required by HUD, CMHA accepted written recommendations from the public on the annual plan. A copy of the summary with the comments and CMHA's responses was sent to the individuals and organizations that submitted comments. A final summary will be posted on the CMHA website on April 17, 2022. At this time, the floor is open for the public hearing on the annual plan. The board will hear, hear comments only about the annual plan for fiscal year 2022-2023 at this time. Members of the public who have joined video, I should say, have joined via video conference to speak, please identify yourself by name, address, and organization, if applicable. When your name is called, please restate your name and speak directly to the board. Thank you. Do we have any speakers in the queue? <coughs> Mr. Chair, there are no speakers waiting in the queue. Can you say that again a little louder? Yes, Mr. Chair, there's no one waiting in the queue. Okay. So um, since there are no requests to speak, the floor will remain open for a period of 15 minutes. If in that time no one comes forward to speak, the meeting will be adjourned. And Mr. Secretary, if you could uh, advise us when the 15 minutes has elapsed. Well, Mr. please. Mr. Chair, I think we uh, have the ability to continue to move forward um, since we got started late and there was no one in the queue at 545 waiting to speak. And we, are, we did start a little late. Um, I think we've exhausted uh, our 15 minutes uh, to give someone the ability to join us and speak. So I think we're okay within the uh, rules and regulations for you to move forward and um, move forward with the rest of the board meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Great. Uh, roll call, Ms. Mitchell. I'm sorry, Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The motion passes. The annual plan public hearing meeting is adjourned. Now, again, good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending this evening's board meeting of the contemporaneous, contemporaneous meeting for instrumentalities, and by the way, that don't have any new business or matters requiring deliberation. The meeting of the following instrumentalities, Laurel Homes One, Lincoln View Incorporated, Reserve on South Martin, Southwest Ohio Housing Development Incorporated, Cary Crossing Development Corporation, West Union Square Development Corporation, Sutter View Development Corporation, Pinecrest Rad Development Corporation, Park Eden Evanston LLC, Park Eden Apartments Development Corporation, Mariana Terrace Development Corporation, Bennett Point Development Corporation, Logan Commons LLC, and Horizon Hills LLC are hereby called to order. Roll call for attendance. Mr. Weedman. Present. Ms. Spears. Present. Mr. O'Donnell. Present. And the chair is present. We have a quorum for the meeting. Commissioners, have you reviewed the March 1st, 2022, rescheduled from February 22nd, 2022, Minutes for these instrumentalities. Motion to approve. Thank Second. You. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. 
Oh, aye. Okay, Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The motion passes. If there's no new business for motion this, to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Roll call to adjourn. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Thank you. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The meeting is adjourned. Now, moving on to the regular meeting of Touchdown Property Services Incorporated for Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. The meeting is called to order. Roll call for attendance. Mr. Weedman. Present. Ms. Spears. Present. Mr. O'Donnell. Present. The chair is present. We have a quorum. Item three is approval of the minutes. And Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any corrections to the minutes? Oh. Hearing none, what roll call. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Ms. Spears? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. The chair votes aye, the motion passes. Item four is discussion of recommendations. Resolution number 181, revised. Resolution approving the financial report for the month of February, 2022 with collection losses. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Ms. Spears? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. The chair votes aye. The resolution passes. Resolution 182 to approve the financial statements for Hamilton County Affordable Housing, Springdale Senior Limited Partnership, DBA Baldwin Grove, the Reserve on South Martin, Cary Crossing, West Union Square, Sutter View, Evanston, Pinecrest Park at Eden Apartments, City West Retail, and Touchdown Property Services for two months ending February 28, 2022 for calendar 2022. Thank you. Second. Second. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Resolution 183 is tabled. Moving on to resolution 184 to approve the calendar year 2022 operating budgets for Horizon Hills LLC and Mariana Terrace, Terrace LLC. Is there a motion to accept? Thank you. <laughs> Second. Thanks. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Resolution 185, providing authorization to proceed with the request for proposals and solicitations for general goods and services from outside vendors. TPS 22-1004, maintenance, repair, and operating supplies. TPS 22-1005, annual and interim recertification processing services. TPS 22-1006, Remediation Services, TPS 22-1007, Tool and Equipment Rental, TPS 22-1008, Flooring Replacement and Repair Services, TPS 22-1009, Electrical Maintenance and Repair Services, TPS 22-1010, Answering Services, TPS 22-1011, Alarm Systems Maintenance repair and monitoring. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Uh, any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The two votes aye, and I recognize Ms. Mitchell has now joined us. Aye. <laughs> Welcome. Are you voting Thank aye you. on that one? Yes, sir. Okay, Hi. Great. Got it. Thank you and welcome. Uh, sorry for your troubles. Um, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, resolution 186 authorizing the CEO of Touchstone Property Services to sign the first one year contract 
extension option for solicitation PP21-1004 for junk removal services with Diamond Professional Contractors, LLC, Fancy Structure Corporation, LLC, AFIST of Contractors, LLC, Rumpke of Ohio Incorporated, Somebody Gotta Do It, LLC, the Stone Street Group, LLC, Trust Us Transportation, LLC, DBA Trust Us Maintenance and Janitorial, and Prestige Home Improvement and Roofing, LLC, in a not to exceed amount of $200,000 annually per contractor for the board approved budget for a maximum five year contract funded by operating funds. Is there a motion? Okay. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Ms. Mitchell. Aye. And the chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Resolution 187, authorizing the CEO of Touchdown Property Services to negotiate and enter into a lease agreement with Benjamin Crotty and Jessica Hagen, DBA Animal Companion Counseling, LLC, at City West Retail. Is there motion. A motion? Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Any questions? This is just a space lease, correct? A little, little louder yeah. there. Yes, yes, correct. Thank you. Okay. How, can other? I ask you a quick question? How much, sure. um, how much vacant space do we have at City West at this point? If any. Uh, I don't remember the bays. Raymond, do you remember how many bays we still have open? Uh, we have, uh, after this one, I believe we have five left. We had six in total. I think we have five remaining. Okay. Vacant. Five that are vacant. Out of 30, I think, believe we have five vacant bays left. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, roll call Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye, the resolution passes. During February 2022, of fiscal year 2022, TPS entered into no non-construction contracts with not to exceed maximum amounts below $100,000. And motion to adjourn. no other business to come before the board? Was motion that a motion to adjourn? Second. Okay, great. Um, any questions? Hearing none, roll call, Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye. The resolution passes. The Touchdown Property Services Incorporated meeting is closed. Now for the regular board meeting of the Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority for Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. The meeting is now called to order. Roll call for attendance. Ms. Mitchell. Present. Mr. Weedman. Present. Ms. Spears. Present. Mr. O'Donnell. Present. And the chair is present. We have a quorum. Item three is approval of the minutes. Motion to approve minutes Second. from March 1st that was rescheduled from February 22nd. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, roll call Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye, the motion passes. Item four is discussion of secretary recommendations. The financial report number, resolution number 5661, approving the bad debt write-offs for February 2022. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Thank Second. you. Second. Thank you. Any questions? I do have a question um, about the uh, vacancies and I'm just wondering what our occupancy situation is and, and vacancy rate. The current vacancy rate is 90.3%. Uh, um, our normal vacancy rate is where we should be is 96%. 
and our goal is to have 98 percent um uh, occupancy what was that sorry greg what was that last point uh, the goal is to be at 98% occupancy, um, but we are at 90.3% occupancy currently. That's 90.3? Um, 90.3. Yes. Correct. So we're eight percentage points away from goal. Correct. So what are the underlying issues contributing to um, vacancy? I mean, I, I would think with a waiting list that we've got that there wouldn't be a vacancy issue, but... What what's on, what's the what's the underlying issue behind the vacancy or occupancy? Well, one one of the main issues that we have is that when we did a conversion of our waiting list, um, we have to ensure that uh, we're pulling people off the waiting list accurately. So we've had to go back and make some changes to our waiting list. So um, we are combining our waiting list to have one waiting list instead of fifty seven different waiting lists. Wow. So we're pulling uh, oh, residents off the waiting list correctly. That's one issue. Uh, the second issue is that um, staffing. So getting, uh, when we do find clients and we do make the connection and we call the clients in um, to process uh, applications and process uh, um, potential applicants, such as it takes, um, depending on what site, but just on, a, on an average, it takes about seven connections to lease a unit on an average. And then some of the larger sites, uh, it takes about 12 connections to make to lease one unit. So with the reduction in staff that we've heard over the last year and a half, uh, it's slowed the process down of being able to process um, that many applicants to lease the units. And then um when we talk about the vacancies we have to make sure that we get the units turned and um because contractors have been having issues and problems with their staffing so we've been trying to increase the contractors to get more contractors so we can lease more units faster as well so the combination of um really staffing from contractors staffing from internal and then the issue that we had with our waiting list has caused us to slow down in leasing. But the great news is, is that um, we've been working with Yardy, uh, Mark and Mary have been able to work it out. We've gotten the waiting list turned around. And so now we're able to pull more uh, individuals off. Um, and then we've, um, We'll be engaging a couple uh, contractors to help with the process to help move the needle uh, of the percentage of the occupancy. The other larger item is, is that um, because of the moratorium and then we start to approach individuals about collecting the rent, uh, we had skip outs as well. So it's, um, if you wanna call it a perfect storm uh, and it's been a perfect storm for us and this is the same storm that's happening across the country. Uh, CMHA is not alone in this. Okay. All right, I mean, do you have a sense for how long it's gonna to take to, to work through this or? I think that uh, for us, um, between now and the current fiscal year, we should see an upward trend, especially because of getting the waiting list turned around. Um, we have units that obviously are available and that are ready um, now um, to start to put, because one of the things is, if you remember a year ago, a year and a half ago, we got a, um, a management letter that we pulled the person off the waiting list incorrectly. So what we didn't want to do is to go for a mad dash and just start pulling people off, putting them in units and then get, go through that issue again. So we wanted to make sure we had this corrected. And by combining the wait list, we had to do a lot of documentation, send a lot of uh, the individuals that were on the current wait list letters, may let, allow them time to respond back to us wow. to get all of those things straightened out. So it's um, it's been a process. Um, and um, so, but we're, we're 90% 95% through that process and repositioning ourselves to 
start back. We, we still have the issue with the staffing levels um, to be able to call the client. So, um, but we feel more confident, we'll be more confident that when the people that we are calling, we will, uh, um, they'll, you know, show up for the units and things like that. As far as our touchstone properties, all of those properties are between 95 and 100% occupancy. So um, we didn't have the mass uh, move out in those properties as we did in our public housing side. Great. Uh, Greg, what a, do we have a lot of open staff positions at the moment? Uh, yeah, yeah, and we're going to get into that into our uh, 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 executive session. But yes, we did, because I, I need to talk to you guys about that. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Roll call, Ms. Mitchell. Laverne, are you Hi. muted? Hi. Hi. Mr. Weedman? Hi. Ms. Spears? Hi. <laughs> Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. And the chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Did I miss something? Okay. Moving on, resolution 566. 5662, revised. Resolution approving the fiscal year 2022, February 2022 financial statements for the Cincinnati and Metropolitan Housing Authority. Motion. Is there a motion to accept? Second. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Item 4B is request for approval to solicit bids for the following items. Resolution 5663, providing authorization to proceed with the request for proposals and solicitations for general goods and services from outside vendors. Solicitation 2022-1011, annual and interim recertification processing services. Solicitation 2022-1012, remediation services. Solicitation 2022-1013, tool and equipment rental. Solicitation 2022-1014, flooring replacement and repair services. Solicitation 2022-1015, maintenance, repair and operating supplies. Solicitation 2022-2003, answering services for housing choice vouchers. Solicitation 2022-3019, San Marco hot water boiler replacement. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Yeah. Second. Thanks. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Ms. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Ms. Spears? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Now, Resolutions to award contract renewals. Resolution 5664, authorizing the CEO of CMHA to sign the first one year contract extension option for solicitation 2021 1004 for junk removal services with AF, AFIST of Contractors LLC, Trustless Transportation LLC, DBA Trustless Maintenance and Janitorial. Swept Away Property Clean Outs, LLC, Fancy Structure Construction, LLC, The Stonecrest Group, LLC, Somebody Gotta Do It, LLC, Rumpke of Ohio Incorporated, uh, Diamond Professional Contractors, LLC, DCJ Janitorial, LLC, and a not to exceed amount of $200,000 annually per contractor or the board approved budget for a maximum five-year contract funded by operational funds. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Thanks. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, I have a, a question for yes. Mr. Thompson, I guess. Um, sure. I'm, uh, when we renew contracts, I understand the, the vetting process that we go through when we initially award contracts, but on renewals, do we, do we also go through a, a checking process to make sure that um, the vendors are still qualified in, in all of the 
respects that they're required to be. Janelle, you want to chime in and answer that question? Um, one of the things I always look at is whether we've got any complaints. We have a spreadsheet with any issues we've had with a contractor. So I'm looking to see if we've had any either invoicing or work performance issues with them, and then also how much we've spent with them. So we vet in that regard. Okay. And there are some times that we do not recommend a contractor for renewal, like maybe a name is left out because there have been issues. So is it more a, um, I guess a uh, delivery, a, a, a more a review of how they've performed versus whether they're still qualified for, uh, a, you know, under the um, uh, under the other requirements. That, I mean, Correct. Just, okay, so it, it's more a performance review at that point. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm just wondering how often it happens that that once somebody meets our initial requirements, that maybe as they as they get renewed two or three times, they 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 still continue to meet the initial requirements. But well, just to kind of, I, I think I believe I know where you're getting at. So as Janelle said. Um, we will use the previous 12 months um, if staff has had any issues as far as their performance at all. And then also uh, if we've had any issues with uh, double billing or not sending invoices in in a timely manner and things like that. Uh, the other big picture uh, items is if uh, a firm gets debarred because they're doing business with another company or another entity, HUD entity, we, we will, uh, we can, we can find that out. So, um, um, if, um, but if you're saying the other items that we normally check, um, in the beginning of is just, uh, legitimate, if they're a legitimate business, uh, and things like that. Um, so mainly it's the service part that, that we check. We don't go back and check and see, um, any other, uh, items. Now we can, if you're saying, if you would like us to, we can incorporate that into um, to do a additional check. And it's easy for Janelle's department just to pull up information, just to make sure that there's still a legitimate business uh, and things like that. And the primary owner is not under uh, invest uh, under indictment or anything like that. Um, we can incorporate that um, just as a, a second check. It's, it's pretty simple to do that. Okay. I'm not suggesting any change to the current policy. I just was curious about what we're currently doing. Thank you. Well, um, I, I hear in Ed's question, does it make sense for us on renewal of a contract to affirm that their liability insurance and things of that nature are still in force as they would have been in your initial uh, vetting? We, yeah, Maybe we, you're already doing that. Yeah, we keep track of all the insurance um, when they're getting close to their, one of their insurances expiring, we'll send them an email. Insurance expires, then they're suspended from work and email goes to everybody, all the property managers or departments that would use them until they get the insurance back. If they don't have insurance for a couple of months, then we terminate the contract. We keep track of how many times we've, we've notified them. Yeah, that's... Um, from a fiduciary uh, seat, that's comforting to know. Uh, <laughs> anything else, Ed? No, that's good. Thanks. Any others? No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Roll call on the question. Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye. The resolution passes. Resolution 5665, authorizing the CEO and CMHA to sign the first one-year contract extension option for solicitation 2021-7004 for printing and mailing services with Joseph Burning Printing Company, Karnak Enterprises LLC, and Specialty Lithographing Company in a not to exceed amount of $400,000 annually per contractor for the board approved budget for maximum five-year contract funded by operational funds, administrative fees, 
management services fees, and development funds. Motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Do we ever do we ever hit that four hundred thousand dollars annually for uh, an individual printing company? No, the most we had with any individual um, was one hundred and fifty-two thousand. But I expect that to decrease since we initially did this contract. We've got in a couple of postage meters and folding machines, so we're able to do more of the work on our own. In house, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes, sir. great. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call. Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Item 4D is adopt a resolution to award the following construction contracts. Resolution 5666, ratifying the CEO of CMHA, entering into a contract for emergency chiller compressor replacement at Reading Apartment for the amount of $118,791.10, funded through capital funds. Motion. Motion, great. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Ms. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Ms. Spears? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Resolution 5667, authorizing the CEO of CMHA to enter into a contract for solicitation 2022-3011 with Blau Mechanical Incorporated for Riverview Hydronic System Replacement for the amount of $179,000 paid for by capital funds. Motion. Thank you. Second. Thanks. Any questions? What is the Riverview Hydronic System replacement? <laughs> Rima, do you want to talk with that one or you want me to? The, um... if, if you'd like to go ahead, I don't know sure. all the technical. <laughs> so the, um, the Riverview is a um, almost historic building. And so the, the mechanics uh, systems that run their uh, heating and chiller and all that, they need to be replaced. With their slate, Riverview and San Marco are slated to be um, renovated in our next closings. So um, this is a uh, um, process and a pre-rad um, um, modernization. So um, those systems down there um, need to be replaced and their mechanicals that operate um, the chiller system uh, and the heating elements uh, in okay. the uh, uh, downstairs. Okay. Yeah. And anytime we can get to a closing is a good thing, right? Great thing. <laughs> a great thing. Okay. So let's see. Um, I've lost my place. Uh, we're on roll call, right? Ms. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Spears? Uh, aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. And the chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Item 4E is adopt a resolution in the general category. Resolution 5668, authorizing adoption of CMHA's personnel policies. Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thanks. Any questions on this? Hearing none, roll call, Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Now resolution 5669, authorizing the CEO of CMHA to negotiate and enter into a contract for solicitation 2022-1006 for inspection services for public housing with Midwest Inspections Services, LLC, and a not to exceed amount of $100,000 annually or the board approved budget for a maximum five-year contract funded by operational funds. Motion. Thank you. Second. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. 
Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Resolution 5670, authorizing the CEO of CMHA to negotiate and enter into contracts for solicitation 2022-3001 for environmental consulting services with MAC Perrin Consulting Services Incorporated, Dominion Environmental Group Incorporated, DBA Dominion Due Diligence Group, Bureau of Veritas Technical Associates, LLC, the Manick and Smith Group Incorporated, ATC Group Services, LLC, DBA Atlas Technical, and Terracon Consultants Incorporated in a not to exceed amount of $100,000 annually per firm or the board approved budget for a maximum five-year contract funded by operational funds, management services funds, capital grants, and development funds. Motion. Uh, Second. You. Any questions on this resolution? Hearing none, roll call. Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The resolution passes. Resolution 5671, adopting a change in the procurement policy for Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority to reflect changes in the micro purchase aggregate and minimum time period for submission of bids. Is motion. there a motion? Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any questions on this resolution? Hearing none, roll call Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. The chair votes aye, the resolution passes. Resolution 5672 is tabled. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, may I ask to uh, reverse that um, okay. table, and um, I would like to ask the board to approve resolution number 5672, and this resolution is authorizing um, the CEO to um, enter into an agreement with Roll Call Technologies. Roll Call Technologies is the platform that is um, used by the Sheriff's Department. It is the only platform that the Sheriff's Department um, uses. And even though that there are additional uh, platforms that are in the country or in the, um, that can do or provide this service, uh, because the sheriff's department, this is the only one the sheriff's departments will use and are using. Um, it is requiring CMHA to be able to enter into an agreement with this organization so we can continue to um, receive the services of the sheriff's department at Stanley Row. Um, I had a verbal conversation with our Cleveland HUD office today and explain the situation to them, whereas they have advised me that as long as we do justification on the uh, pricing um, of other vendors, which we got pricing for other vendors, and also advised me to do, or I could do additional justification for the use of this um, and, and it not being a competitive bid um, and we have done that. The additional just uh, the first, um, the pricing, uh, the roll call pricing is less expensive. And secondly, before we were able to obtain the sheriff's department at Stanley Row, there were three um, terrible uh, incidents that happened um, in the uh, community room. Uh, in the front door of Stanley Row A and uh, on the street in front of Stanley Row B. All of these um, ended up in people losing their lives. So uh, that justification that I communicated to the Cleveland field office, they uh, more than said, yes, uh, those two items would uh, satisfy us um, as far as 
uh, CMHA entered into an agreement with them um, without a competitive bid. Okay, I'll make a motion. We approve uh, resolution 5672. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Just one further question for Greg. Um, that was, what was the name of the organization again, Greg? Uh, it's called Roll Call, and it is a um, platform that, that does payroll, payroll and it does tracking for the sheriff's department. So basically the way that when I talk to the sheriff, um, the way they explained it to me is that sometimes they have problems keeping track of where the officers are. Um, and these, the, the hours that they work for us are off duty hours. Uh, even though they're in uniform, they had a car and all those things, they're still off duty hours that's paid by the vendor. And okay. this helps them monitor where they are, who's paying them and how much they're getting paid um, 24 hours a day. So does this include the actual cost of the off-duty officers themselves or is this just the, like the uh, payroll service or the tracking service? So to be both. So what we'll have to do is interact with this system and we will pay the hourly rate um, that we're charged for the officer in addition to an additional percentage that we have to pay roll call for this yeah. service. Okay. Um, the sheriff's department is putting on the vendor the responsibility of paying for them getting a tracking system. And, and what is the annual amount of this? Uh, Janelle, do you know the annual amount of uh, the annual amount of the roll call um, or the annual well, the, amount of the office? Well, the resolution, I guess, just the. What is what is the amount the board's being asked to approve here in the resolution? I did not calculate this. I remember calculating. I didn't think the roll call call portion would be over sixty thousand. I think it'll be less than that. And the amount paid to the sheriffs was already approved. So if I can add to that a resolution, then just to make sure, um, I would ask the board to approve this. Um, at no more than $65,000 annually. And then if there's an additional amount, we'll come back to the board and ask for additional. So Greg, you said 65,000, the resolution says 60,000. There's a resolution on there? Uh, but, but, well, the, re the, yeah. the description of the resol of resolution. Oh yeah, that was in the- You said 60,000. Oh, you mean uh, the part that you had in the beginning? Uh, I that that's fine. I just um, we we haven't calculated, and the reason that it's hard to calculate is because there's two factors. One, it depends on how many hours the sheriff's department works, and so it's a percentage of those hours. Okay. It's not just a flat fee. Yeah. So I'm, all I'm saying is, in your six, agenda for this meeting, six, you, uh, it, which is a public document, six, you show sixty thousand. So six, we can either go 60, with sixty thousand, we can amend it to sixty-five. It's no, good either 60, way. 60 is fine and we'll come back after 60. 60 is fine. Okay. We'll, we'll stick with the public okay. document. Right. Um, I, I think it might also be the case, if I'm asking you to uh, speak to this, Janelle. Uh, is there any reason to think that we're being charged a different formula than any other uh, user of uh, sheriff's uh, details, such as big groceries or others? Would you know? Yeah, um, they sent me an agreement with another entity that was paying less than us, but probably, and I discussed that a little bit with Marquita, when you think about the risk with where they are with the Stanley Row versus, I forget what it was, it was like some healthcare something. I can find that and send that to Mr. Johnson if you would. Yeah, their fee, well, Mr. Miles, if you're saying the sheriff's fee, their fee is different based on risk. So yeah. our fee would be different than the Reds baseball stadium fee versus Kroger's. Okay. Um, and it's based on, uh, because they come out and they do an assessment um, before they even accept an assignment um, on safety. And then once they do an assessment on safety, then they assess uh, the the risk factor, and then um, the the rate goes from there. Okay, you're talking about the rate for 
the sheriff's deputies no, on the no. detail. My, my question goes to the rate being charged by roll call. Is it the same for all? I, th I think years? it is. You can actually go on their website for Did their rates. Did you say rates. you think it is? I'm I believe sorry. it is because if okay. you go to their website, the rates are in their, their terms and conditions that you can view there. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's 5% um, if you pay one way and seven and a half another. Yeah. But those are considerably less than other, other companies charge for similar okay. services. And they're doing more than a credit card processing uh, company, for example. Uh, but like, like you say, they're doing a significant amount of payroll accounting uh, mm -hmm. as a clearinghouse. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Uh, all right. So roll call on resolution 5672. Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye. A resolution passes. During February 2022, fiscal year 2022, <laughs> CMHA entered into no non construction contracts with not to exceed maximum amounts below $100,000. There were no construction contracts below $100,000 in January. Are there any questions or discussions from board members? No, not for me. Do we need a vote on that uh, statement? No, it's just an update. Okay, very good. So now the board will go into executive session to review personnel and real estate. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call to go into executive session. Ms. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Weedman. Aye. Ms. Spears. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The motion passes. Um, so uh, I got a question. Reason? Are we going to leave this meeting and enter into another one or? Is that all going to be done uh, through Crystal, or how does this work? Yes, I will move you as you're ready, as you conclude this meeting. Are you ready for it to be moved? Not, not quite yet. Um, Tom, I don't want to interrupt you. Did you get your question answered? Yes. Um, Greg, what about staff remaining on the call at this point? Uh, they they don't. No, they don't have to hang on because we're not going to come out and do any voting or anything. The only thing we're going to do is vote. The only person that has to hang out is Gary. Okay. For, yeah. for the notes. All right. Well, um, so let's see. Um, did we have the vote to go into executive session? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, staff. You know, I, again, take the liberty of speaking for, I'm sure, every board member. Um, you know, as we go through these uh, uh, board packets in preparation for a meeting and during the course of a meeting, uh, over and over, it's apparent how, you know, you're just pulling rabbits out of the hat day after day, and uh, you're doing a great job. It's not an easy environment out there. Uh, we're so glad that you're a part of CMHA and uh, we thank you um, and probably could take more opportunities to say the same, but certainly tonight. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, did um, I want to make sure, did I take the liberty of introducing our new vice president of, of finance no. um, at one of our board meetings? So I, I just, so. Uh, I, I don't think so either. So I just want to, before we go into executive session, just wanted to make sure I introduce uh, Bianca Brown. Uh, Bianca, you can wave your hand so they'll see. Yeah, um, that has joined us in uh, in our uh, finance department, and she actually is um, um, over our finance department and our procurement department as well. So she's taking on a big, big, big part of uh, the organization. Um, so I, I just wanted to make sure I I done that. Sure. Well, welcome, Bianca. We're, we're glad to have you on board. When did you begin? Uh, great to be a part. I began in December, mid-December. So feel right. like old times now after three or four yeah, months? Yeah, definitely. definitely. 
Yeah. Good answer, Bianca. Great answer. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, thanks to all of you. Uh, understand that we <clears throat> appreciate what you're doing behind the scenes that we never even hear about. Um, so have a great night. We'll see you yeah. next time. Thank you all very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Miles. Thank you. Okay. Have a great Good night. Well, that's from every board member, not just me. Thank you. We right. appreciate the kind words. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, so, Crystal, you're going to move us? Okay. So, I, I looked, it looks like there's a button here for Crystal is asking us to join. And so, we just hit that, and I believe we'll be in the meeting, right, Crystal? That is correct, Mr. Johnson. So if you could hit join on your screen. I do not see join on my screen. You don't have it on yours, Tom? It's not nope. in the middle there? Mine popped up right in the middle on my Mine screen. not on here. Okay. I do see Gary's First, smiling face. Oh, there we go. Got it. Got just, it. just popped up. <laughs> All right. And then I'll jump over.
Hello, Gary. Hello. <laughs> you weren't sleeping, were you? Oh, no. Did we wake you up? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. May I have a motion to come out of executive session? Motion to come out of executive session. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Ms. Mitchell. Oh, we lost oh, Ms. Spears. Well, lost Ms. Spears. Spears. She okay. probably pushed to leave the meeting instead of leave the room. Yeah, but uh -huh. it should be okay. Yeah, we got a quorum. We have a quorum. Yeah, we, yeah. we have a quorum. Okay. Uh, okay. It, so you, you voted aye. Uh, aye to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Ms. Spear, uh, Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The motion passes. If there's no other business to come before the board. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Uh, Ms. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Weedman? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. Thank you. Ms. Spears? She's, connect she's connecting the audio still. Okay. Thanks, Gary. I think she's with us now. No? Okay. We're, okay. we're voting to adjourn, uh, Terry, and uh, I'm asking for your vote, yes or no. Yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The motion passes. Regular board meeting is adjourned. Thanks so much to each of you. Uh, you know, uh, there are issues and hardships that each of you are persevering through that you don't even mention and probably in an attempt not to further burden Greg, uh, but it, it should be said as well that um, it doesn't just happen that we can get a forum in times like this. So thank you so much. Yeah. And- uh, All right, no problem. problem. Yeah. Good night. No problem. Thank you, okay. everybody. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Don't forget. Good night. Don't forget. We have a we have a Friday morning meeting Friday. at ten, but yeah, it should only take it yeah. like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 And Gary's going to send out well. the link for that. Gary's going to send out the link for it. Yeah. Great. Yes, thank I you. will send everything out tomorrow. Yes. All right. Okay. And, All right. And thank, thank you. you. Same big picture. We're going to continue right. to Zoom until the August meeting. That's Correct. Our, our intent. Correct. At this Correct. point. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks All right. again. Bye. Thank Bye. you, everybody. See you. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, my God. Can I leave? <laughs> <laughs>